Hello, you're not going to see my face in this video because I thought it would be easier for you to see onto the table. So this video is just for people who have never done English paper piecing before. So I thought I'll take it from the very beginning. Um, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see everything clearly. So let's start. So I've got some fabric and my templates. What you want to do is place your template on the fabric and draw a quarter of an inch round your shape. So if you've been doing it for a while, I'm sure a lot of people don't bother drawing it anymore. They just eye quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. You can see I've just moved it there. You can use a little bit of glue pen to keep your template in place. So like you said, I'm just going to draw all the way around each side of the shape. There might be some silences in the video while I'm doing stuff, but I'll try and uh, chat away. There we go. So I've drawn around it quite roughly. And then what you need to do is cut around your drawn lines. Here we go. I forgot my scissors. I just had to run to my other table to grab them. Here we go. So I'm just going to cut around the shape. I'm using one inch hexagons for this um, for this tutorial. I think one inch hexagons are usually the most popular. There we go. So I'm going to get rid of the stuff out of the way so that you can see clearly. So I like to glue base using Soline glue pens and what you're going to do is place your card centrally back on where you've just cut and you don't need to use much glue at all you can probably barely see how much I'm using I glue onto the fabric so you just glue one side fold over and press then you're going to go on the next side fold over and press it down and repeat that all the way around all the shapes There we go. So you get nice crisp edges using the glue. So that is basting. Simple, right? This is the lovely thing about English paper piecing is this, it is so easy. And it doesn't matter what shape you use, it's the same process. Right, so next up, I'll use this, I'm gonna make a little hexy flower. So you're gonna have to bear with me while I'm sewing because it will take a little while. So I've, um, Basted six other hexes, and in the end, they're gonna look like this, but all sewn together. So, I'm gonna take the first one and put it right sides together with, together with the other one, and we're gonna sew along this edge here. So, I've knotted my cotton end and you're just gonna start at the very end of the line. You're not going through the paper pieces at all. You're just picking up a tiny bit of the fabric. I hope you can see that. I'm just gonna go a bit closer. There you go, you can see that there. And what you're gonna do is a lovely whip stitch all the way along the side of the shape. They don't need to be too close together, but they don't want to be too far apart. So once I've done this line, I'll show closer to the camera, if I possibly can, my stitching. So like I said, you're not going through the card because you're going to remove the card from the temple, uh, from, from the fabric at the end. Just got a knot in my cotton, always the way when I'm demonstrating stuff. There we go. So when I get to the end of the row, I'm not gonna knock my cotton off because I'm going to add the next shape. Here we go. So, not sure how clear that is that you can see my stitches. Possibly should have used a different colored thread, but this gray is my go-to for everything. So next up, 
you're gonna open your hexagons. This one I've used as the middle one and I'm gonna add my next hexagon just on this row here. So right sides together again, like so. And I'm just going to carry on with my whip stitch. I'm left-handed, so if it looks slightly strange to you, that would be why. So again, it's the same process, just going through. If you use my templates, they're a nice thickness so you can feel the template with your needle. So there's no chance of going through it. You can also use my templates over and over again. I tend to get a good eight to 10 uses out of one piece because I'm very careful with them and I don't try not to fold them. So, as you can see, I'm nearly at that end, so I'm gonna have to carry on. I'm not gonna nod it off. There we go. It's got to the end, it's open out again. And then find your next hexagon, right sides together. And just carry on. So I'm not gonna do editing of this video because technically I could now turn it off and then show you all of the six hexagons sewn onto the middle hexagon. But instead you're gonna have to sit and watch me sew them on. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep going. I might start doing my stitches further apart than usual just to get across the shape quicker for you guys to, to see how I'm doing it. I do hope this is clear for you. There we go. That's another one on. And now we're gonna pick the next one. This is very, this is Scrappy, which is the name of the group, isn't it? I've just grabbed whatever I could find, little pieces. They actually do go together quite nicely, these ones. Must have been from a project that I used them all on because they were in the same bag. There we go. I'm hoping my hands aren't shaking too much. It's quite hard to sew at a certain angle when you're trying to show the camera. So we're going along. We've only got two more to, sh to add before I'll show you how we sew up the sides. And then that would be a hexi flower complete once the sides are. Once the sides are sewn up. There we go, so we've got to another end. We'll add another hexi on. So this is just my absolute favorite thing to do, as I'm sure most of you know. I spend all my time English paper piecing. Sorry if you can hear background noise. I live just on a main road, so there's often lorries going past. I'm surprised we haven't had a siren yet, to be honest. There we go. Go, keep going. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. And then we're just going to add the last hexagon on. Open it out, right sides together, and pop the next one on there. Oh, I just want to say thank you all for joining this group. I can't believe how many people have joined it already. It's going to be so much fun. I'm absolutely loving seeing everyone's um, makes that they've already done. I've just started basting some hexagons ready for my new scrappy project. So I'll be posting those as I go along. There we go. So if you wanted to, you could knot off your thread now. I'm going to keep mine going. I'm going to keep mine on because I've got enough thread to, because I'm going to sew these two together next. But first, to make your um, hexagon paper pieces last longer, now all sides of this shape have been sewn around, I'm going to remove that paper piece because then I won't have to bend it at all. I've only just glued these, so they're just gonna fly off, but they come off easily anyway. There we go. So I've got rid of that one. 
And as you can see, my thread is there, so I'm going to sew these two together. So right sides together again, just like before, this is the thing, English paper piecing is just repeating the same stitch, sewing your shapes together. I'm going, you're going to have to bear with me in a minute because I'm going to have to re-thread my needle with some new thread because I'm getting to the end of this one. nearly at the end of this line and I'll just sew two more hexagon sides together to show you and then I'll let you be. There we go so when you get to the end and you need to knot it off what I do is I pop my needle through I wrap my cotton around the needle a couple of times and pull a knot. I usually take a stitch back just so I know the knot's fully secure and then I'm going to cut off my thread. As you can see now two of those sides have been sewn together. I'm actually wondering if, if I've got enough cotton just to sew another side together. So I'm just going to knot my cotton again. You probably can't see that very well. I've just realised I've got glue or <laughs> sew line glue all over my nails. You can tell what I've been, spent the morning doing can't you? There we go. So I'm just gonna sew these two together now. So again, same thing, right sides together. Oh, another tip I've got though, is if you get sore wrists, just put a quilter's clip on that end and then you're not gonna to have to hold it tight at all because it's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm gonna start from the inside, because when I say inside, that's my central hexi. So I'm gonna start there, knotted my cotton. And again, it is just a small whip stitch all the way across and you're going to repeat this to sew all the sides of the hexes together and then you could make another flower and when you come to sew those flowers together same thing the sides that you want to sew down to attach them to each other right sides together and whip stitch along I've just got to the end of this row and I'm going to knot it off wrapping it round and taking my little stitch back that I always do. You don't have to do that stitch, it's a habit I've got into. And knot it off. So, there is the hexagon sewn together. Well, almost, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sew those there right now. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful um, and I hope it's filmed properly. Let me know if you need any help with anything, I'm always here to give you a hand. Thanks for watching. Bye.